this video, I'll be going over identifying bat skulls. So we are in the order Chiroptera, that's all bats. Family Vespertilionidae, all of the bats that we have in Montana are in this family, but there are many other families of bats. Bat skulls um, have, well, all of the Montana bat skulls have a similar pattern. They're all relatively small, and they all have this kind of weird, um, looks like a, someone took a bite out of the front of the skull. Some have the wider gap than others, depending on the species. And then also, another thing distinctive about the bats we have here, they have these W-shaped molars. So the cusp on top of the molar looking straight down is a zigzag like a W. I've mentioned before that it's often difficult to tell apart premolars and molars. In bats, this is one of the cases where we can tell the difference. And that difference is whether the premolar is V-shaped, so that's one single zigzag, or W-shaped with two. That's the premolar versus the molar. Plus, there are also sometimes really small premolars that are little pegs that are between the V-shaped one and the canine which both of those should be easy to recognize, but counting the number of little pegs is going to be important for identification. So, looking at the bats then, we have six species that we're covering in this class, plus two more we're not, but we only are looking at the skulls for five of them. First one we have, Antrozoos pallidus, has one upper incisor, unlike the rest of them. So that capital I means upper incisor, it also, if you want to check, has two lower incisors. Now, if you want, you can figure out the dental formula for the species overall, but I'm just pointing out the particular teeth that are worth noting for identification because the other ones may be the same or you don't need to, for example, count the number of canines because all of these have one upper and one lower canine. Right, so one upper incisor, and then this is kind of secondary. Eptiscus, Eptiscus fuscus, the big brown bat, has two upper incisors and one upper premolar. Compared to these two, which have two upper incisors and two upper premolars. And compared to this one that has two upper incisors and three premolars. So one premolar, two premolars, three premolars. Looking at this myos SPP, this SPP meaning various members of the myotis genus. So if you don't, if you're talking about multiple myotis and you don't really care what, you can just put SPP. If you're talking about one particular myotis and you don't know what it is, myotis SP means some member of the genus which is what we're going to do because we can't identify any further. We have a lot of myotis species in the state and they're very difficult to identify skin or skull. So SPP for multiple, SP for just some random myotis. Speaking of which, this up here is a myotis skull that I drew. So things to point out, this is a top-down view. And the thing about bat skulls is it can be really difficult to see the teeth, so you're going to want to try to look at it from different angles. Meaning, if you come in person and are looking through the microscope, you're gonna to want to tilt it while you're looking at it. If you are looking online, definitely refer to multiple images and not just one, because it can be hard to find the little teeth hiding. So in this case, we have two upper uh, incisors. So we have one kind of sticking forward and one sticking up towards the view looking down at this. Then we have this canine sticking up straight at us. Two little teeny tiny premolars, and I mean like really, really tiny. And then a large uh, premolar that you might be confused with the molar, but you're not gonna get confused because you recognize it's a V and not a W. 
and then we have the W's. Those are the moles. So all of these skulls are going to look like this, but plus or minus premolars and incisors. I guess minus because this will have the most. So then, last thing, these two here, Lavi Victor's and Dr. Baggins, Corin and Rhinus Townsendi, they have the same dental formula. What do we do? Well, according to um, the key, there are a few different ways to do it. In particular, the size of the auditory boule, though I personally go with this other one that we should also mention, which is to say, rostrum, the snout, broad and concave on both sides, or rostrum narrow and convex on both sides. Concave means sinking in, concave sticking out. If you look at a side view of the skull, what you'll notice is right along the snout, kind of in front of the eyes, there are these two kind of little indentations on either side that are sunk in, concave, for this species. But for Coriogorhinus townsendi, in that spot, there are two little bulges where it's sticking out. And that's what I look at when I'm trying to figure this out. So there are other things mentioned in the, um, in the key. Though I personally find the um, auditory bully to be hard to tell if I don't have them right next to each other, where this is a little bit more reliable. 